Here we are back to Gary Paulison's Tuckett's Ride. We're at chapter 8. For a moment, Francis thought he'd ridden into his own private war. He came around a corner in the trail, the mare running wide, opened his rifle ready, and found himself in the middle of what proved to be twelve men on horses. Francis had flashes of images. Somehow, all twelve men looked dirty at once, covered with trail dust, all riding scruffy Indian-style ponies, wild stock, very small and very tough, and all wore what he thought of as mixed Indian clothing, leather leggings, wool blankets with holes cut for their heads. Some had feathers, some wore old felt hats, some had no shirts on at all in spite of the cold. They were all covered in weapons. All had rifles or shotguns. Some had bows and quivers full of arrows tied to their backs. Others had one, two, even three revolvers in their belts. Francis saw the tomahawks in the belts. They were all shooting into the brush on the left side of the trail. Garcia, Francis thought, they must be shooting at Garcia in there. And then a second thought, I have made a terrible mistake. There was no time for any other thought. He raised and cocked his rifle and picked a target. But before he could pull the trigger, what looked like all the guns in the world seemed to be aimed at him, and they all fired at the same time. He had time to see one ball crease the mare's neck, another neck nick her ear, and then something slammed into the side of his head, and he had nothing resembling a thought after that. He was sure he was dead. There had been times before when he thought he would die several times, but this time he was certain. And so, when there seemed to be things happening in his mind, he thought he was either in heaven or hell. And whichever it was, Lottie's voice was there. I think it's disgraceful the way you just tied him up and dumped him across the saddle like a piece of meat. His head is all bloody, and I think I see his brains in there ready to leak out. And you're just letting him hang like that where they could flop out in the dirt? It all faded then into the kind of redness that covered him, and he stayed that way until something jerked at him, pulled him sideways, and threw him down on the ground. He might be dead already for all you care. Look at him. He's all shot to pieces. What's he going to do to be worth to you if his brains flop out? This time Francis tried opening his eyes. He was on his back, and when he opened them, the sun was shining directly into them and seemed to shoot a hot spear into the center of his head. He jerked his eyes shut. It did not stop Lottie's voice. Where are you taking us? All I see ahead is mountains and brush. Nobody of a civil nature would take two children to a wilderness. Oomph! There was a thump and Lottie's voice stopped. This time Francis turned away from the sun a bit and opened his eyes and kept them open. His head was exploding in pain. Waves of it came from the left side over to the right. He started to reach up and feel it, but his hands were tied together. When he tried to roll and free his arms, somebody in back kicked him in the ribs hard enough to make the breath whistle out of his nose. He lay still on his side and tried to focus on what he could see. A forest of horses' legs was there, standing still. There was a smell of horse sweat, so they had been working hard. Men moved back and forth, tightening cinches and checking hooves. They were stopped in a small clearing in a stand of pinion and juniper. The ground was rocky. He could not make could not see Lottie or Billy or Garcia without moving, and he was afraid that if he moved, the men would kick him again and he would pass out. It had all come back to him now, riding into the men, raising his rifle, getting shot at Garcia. What had happened to Garcia? Probably dead. Aside from the pain in his head and what he thought was dried blood caked there and down the side of his face, he had not another burning pain across his left thigh. It looked like a ball had creased there, only slightly breaking the skin. There must be the problem with his head as well. A ball had creased him. How he, how in heaven's name could all these men shoot at him and miss? And after not killing him in the first place, why did they keep him alive and not just shoot him and be done with it? Ah, uh, somebody said in English and kicked Francis again, this time in the back. Francis rolled into his stomach, worked his knees beneath him and levered himself up. His head was on fire. He didn't have fast enough, didn't move fast enough and somebody kicked him again. Francis, you have to get up and get on the horse. These men will shoot you, sure, if you can't ride. Lottie's voice sounded on the edge of crying. Please get up. Lottie, shut up. Another kicked. Another kick. But this time, the force of the blow helped him move up, and he gained his feet. Mount. There was the mare standing next to him. She had a bloodied ear and a blood down her neck from the wound there, but was apparently not hit in any other place. It was a miracle, he thought, that he hadn't been riddled 
and that somehow they hadn't hit the mare solid, solid either. He grabbed the saddle horn and pulled himself up, foot in the stirrup, leg up and over, sitting there on the edge of vomiting with pain, but sitting there hanging on to the horn with his tied hands and weaving slightly. Now he could see better as well. As, all, uh, as well. They had been climbing into a shallow pass, heading south by the direction of the sun. By the direction the sun stood, he had been face down over the saddle. His stomach was bruised, and his shoulders and arms were sore from bumping against the side of the horse. How long he had been unconscious, he couldn't guess. The men worked on in silence. They were now, now that Francis had had time to study them, very hard men. Some of them looked at looked to be full-blood Indians, and some appeared to be mixed, but they all knew horses and wasted no time checking their mounts. There was no water, but some snow and patches. They rubbed the snow up inside their horses' lips to moisten them. They had ridden hard, Francis thought, and planned to ride harder. Lottie and Billy were still on the mule ahead of him, three or four paces. Lottie, looking back with worry in her eyes, she had a bruise on the side of her face where she'd been struck. Billy had been crying, but he seemed quiet now and was looking at the men the way Francis had studied them, checking their gear, their mounts, the way he, they looked. Francis almost smiled. Billy was growing faster than he thought. He started to say something, but Lottie saw his face and shook her head, held her finger to her lips and whispered, We don't like it if you talk. Shut up, a man mounted next to her said, or we will leave you tied to a tree for the coyotes. There was no chance for talk after that. The men mounted, spread out in single file with Francis on the mare, Lottie and Billy on the mule in the middle, and set off without speaking another word. Headed south, away from any civilization, away from the trail west, away from help, away. <laughs> and that was chapter eight. Makes you want to read chapter nine. Ah, that's a good writer. All right. Bye.